Hello everyone! This time our journey brings us in the city of Hamburg and Ribe, the oldest city in Denmark. It comes in three versions, Sportback, Convertible and Coupé. We had a Sportback. So this is the Audi A5 Sportback 2018 model. As usual, we'll start with the front part of the car. As you already noticed, we have this big front air grill, which is specific to all nowadays Audi models. We have chrome here, nice and aggressive big headlamps and everything is integrated here like the signal light and the fog light. We have two active air vents here which goes directly to the brakes. The parking sensors are placed here. The bonnet is big, it hides a 2.0 TSI petrol engine, 109 horsepower and 320 newton meters. So we are on the right side of the car. The first thing that I would like to start with is that we have frameless window. If you remember from our uh, previous episodes, when we evaluated the Volkswagen Arteon, the A5 was one of the competitors. Alloy wheels on 18 inches. The fuel trunk capacity is uh, 52 liters. The ground clearance, 12 centimeters. Full LED tail lights. Because this version is a sport bag, as I mentioned, the car has a particular shape because we have a four door coupe but the visibility through the rear window is quite good, I would say. Of course, you have also back parking sensors. Now that we evaluated the car from the outside, let's get inside. With more than 12 years of history and over 650,000 units sold in Europe, Audi A5 is a combination of A4 and A7 models. You can have it as two-door or four-door coupé. At its second generation now, the A5 looks more aggressive and interesting, both inside and outside, but respecting the same prestige in terms of quality materials. Assembled only in Germany, the A5 comes with new updated engines, manual or automatic gearbox and either a front-wheel or a four-wheel drive. The version that we had on our trip was a 2.0 TFSI petrol engine with a 7-speed S-tronic gearbox, cruise control, driving assist system, heated seats and multimedia with an estimated cost of 46,000 euros. On this version we have nice 18-inch wheels, 8.3-inch infotainment and leather steering wheel. Next. As you already know, I would like to make an analysis based on four aspects. Price versus what you get and what some other options are. Who should buy this car? What is its audience? Good things versus bad things? And last but not least, how was my experience driving it? What are the conclusions? 
More than 1,500 kilometers drove in our trip to Hamburg and Denmark. The car is comfortable and spacious for the front passenger. The people in the back will have maybe some issues with the space. The trunk capacity is not the biggest in the class, but you get a nice access space, which is definitely an advantage of a four-door coupe in comparison with a sedan. The inside of the car looks new, as said previously, a lot of things are changed now. Bigger and better MMI interface, new design for dashboard and buttons, better seats. You get cruise control, air conditioning, heated seats, front and back parking sensors and voice command. The MMI infotainment interface works flawlessly, but in our version there was no module available for Android Auto or Apple Car. Competitors? 44,000 euros Volkswagen Arteon. 42,000 euros Opel Insignia Grand Sport. 46,500 euros BMW 420. 41,000 euros Ford Mondeo Titanium. Volkswagen Arteon on the stage from 2017 as a replacement for Volkswagen Passat CC, almost 30,000 units sold. The interior is the one you find in Passat, so A5 here wins without any doubts, but in terms of space and comfort, I would say the Arteon is a better match. Opel Insignia, manufactured since 2008, almost 1 million units sold B-Turbo diesel engine. It looks nice and it comes as standard with an impressive package of features. BMW 420, originally manufactured since 2013, almost 320,000 units sold, comes with rear-wheel drive, iDrive infotainment and a comparable dashboard design. Ford Mondeo Titanium, the oldest member in our list, manufactured since 1997, with more than 3.2 million units sold. It is cheaper, but offers more space and comes with a lot of features. Well, what would you choose? The audience for A5? I would say young couples. It's sporty, comfortable and easy to drive. Good things versus bad things. As positive aspects I would mention, everything is built with high quality and you get a good feeling being inside the car, everything is nice on touch. Good seats, you feel comfortable, there is a plenty of space good engine transmission packages, easy to drive, quite maneuverable, practical, good isolation at high speeds. Negative point, lack of space for the back passengers. Let's sum up, 3 days, more than 1500 km in Hamburg and Ribe, comfortable, spacious and quite economical. We didn't feel the necessity of a quattro transmission even if we had a lot of slippery roads. The car is stable at high speeds and in windy condition due to its shape and because it's closer to the ground. If you compare it with its competitors, the price is not definitely an advantage. It is heavy on your wallet, also the maintenance costs are higher, but you feel the difference for what you pay.